Thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction and thank you to the organizer for inviting me. This is my first CCP4 study weekend as a speaker, so I'm very happy to share my research. So today I will talk about hydrogen atoms and uh, I will demonstrate the new um, uh, development in the CCP4 suite for dealing with these atoms. And I will show uh, new implementation in RefMac5 for the re neutral refinement of biological structure. And at the end, I will show some algorithm for placing hydrogen atoms based on the fit to the density. So hydrogen are highly represented in macromolecules and they play a critical role in enzyme chemistry as they are involved in enzymatic reaction. However, their visualization is not straightforward. We know that in X-ray crystallography, is hydrogen atoms are invisible in the electron density maps at typical resolution. This is because due to the low electron content of hydrogens, at subatomic resolution, we can see the most of hydrogen atoms, but the more mobile ones, which are those involved in the reaction, are often undetected even at very high resolution. By contrast, neutral macromolecular crystallography is a powerful method for locating hydrogen atoms. This is because there is the interaction of neutron with atomic nuclei. And the neutron scattering length of hydrogen in the form of deuterium is of a similar magnitude of those of the ever atom. For this reason, hydrogen are clearly observable in neutron density maps, even at medium resolution. So in 2020, single particle cryo-EM achieved atomic resolution, and Nakane uh, and colleagues determined the structure of apoferritin at 1.22 angstrom, and also the structure of GABA receptor at 1.7 angstrom. And one of the most interesting things is that we can see some hydrogen peaks even at 1.7 angstrom of resolution. I like clinic ray crystallography. But how, uh, what, um, how we can visualize hydrogen atoms in chlorium electron diffraction experiment? Well, electrons are scattered by electrostatic potential, which is formed by both positively charged nucleus and negatively charged electron density. For the hydrogen atom, the electron density is shifted toward the parent atom, so the distance, the current distances for hydrogen electron position result shorter in comparison to the hydrogen nuclear position. For this reason, if we want to refine a properly model hydrogen atoms for, uh, for cryo-EM and electron diffraction experiments, we need both uh, information about hydrogen position, hydrogen nuclear position, and hydrogen electron position. So <clears throat> RefMac5, like many of the refinement packages, uh, use stereochemical restraints in order to ensure that the mod model is chemically sensible. And we know, we know that because um, the resolution of the data alone does not allow for the model refinement of a correct uh, model from a point uh, of a macromolecule from a chemistry point of view. So using restraints refinement allow us to improve the data to parameter ratio and to have a better chemistry. So the stereochemical restraints used by RefMac5 are uh, organized in a dictionary called CCP4 monomer library. And in this dictionary, we can find the list of monomers, which are any molecular entity that can exist individually. For example, a constituent block of macromolecules like amino acids, lichens, nucleotides, sugars. A list of modifications, which are changes on a monomer due to a chemical reaction. A, link, a list of links, which are the possible covalent links between monomers. And to date, there are more than 30,000 monomers in the dictionary and more than 100 entries of modification and links. And all these files are written in MMC format. So each monomer in the dictionary is described by different category. There is a general category which uh, um, demos, in which are described the general characteristic of the monomer. Atom category describes the atoms, three categories used to generate coordinates. Bond category, um, it's used to uh, uh, give information about uh, the bonds, so the type, for example, the uh, bond length. Angle category, torsion angle category, chirality category, the plane category. Um, uh, um, sorry, uh, describe the monomer in the library. Um, 
So here there is an example of modification that there is a modification on this uh, amino acid in order to create a link. So the, um, the two monomers are modified and in order to be linked and also the link description which, uh, in which there are all these categories also to describe links. So to have restraints uh, suitable for the neutral refinement, for the um, cryo-EM and electron diffraction refinement of hydrogen atom, we implemented the monomer library uh, files by including information about hydrogen nuclear position in these library files. And we used two approach. In the first approach, we uh, this uh, bond length distances involving hydrogen atoms were derived uh, from literature. So Allen and Bruno derived uh, um, this bond length from neutron data analysis from the Cambridge Structural Database. And in the second approach, um, these uh, values, these bond length values were uh, um, generated by performing quantum mechanical calculation from a small molecule database from drug bank. So in this table, we can see the distances and uh, relative standard deviation for each hydrogen, for each bond class involving hydrogen obtained by the two methods, and we can see that these distances are very similar, suggesting us that the theoretical calculation are uh, consistent with experimental data. So to carry out the implementation, we used ASTRAG. ASTRAG is the stereochemical descriptor generator used for uh, the monomer library ligands in uh, CB4, so in RefMAC5 and CUT. Is drug derived atom types from small molecules database. There are a new is drug version which allow to modify these restraints. And after the implementation of the restraints, um, the properly implementation was checked by using MGM is a very useful library for structural biology, which allow to work with uh, many macromolecular model or data or restraints. So Prior to the implementation, the monomer library have uh, uh, only this information about the hydrogen electron position in the bond category. Now there is also this uh, new information about hydrogen nuclear position that can be used for cryo-EM electron diffraction and neutron diffraction refinement of macromolecules. Also, um, the CCP4 monomer library was extended with the addition of um, new links uh, and these links were added by using a -struck. So now I will talk a little bit about the new implementation in RefMAC5 for the neutral refinement of biological structure. So in neutron diffraction, the exchange of hydrogen with deuterium is a valid strategy which allows us to uh, uh, improve the signal to noise expression. But with the partial deterioration, in general, just only the 25% of hydrogen atoms are exchanged with, um, with deuterium. The, all, the other ones, those, for example, bond to carbon, can be exchanged only if you perform a fully deterioration during the synthesis of proteins. So here we present an implementation for the mixture refinement of HD parameters. So here there's the contribution of an atom to the scattering. C represents the occupancy. M is the mixture parameters for, of two isotopes. B is the atomic displacement parameter. And B1 and B2 are the coherent scattering length for isotope one and isotope two. We refine the mixture parameter for each hydrogen atom. And when M is equal to one, then only hydrogen contributes. And when M is equal to zero, then only D contributes. So to test the new implementation, we performed a refinement, a re-refinement of the neutron crystal structure of the wild type rubredoxin at 1.5 of resolution. So prior the um, um, prior the refinement in this MMC file, we can see this occupancy, which represent the partially exchange uh, hydrogen uh, and deuterium in the, in, the, uh, uh, in the structure. And after the, the refinement, we will have just one value, which represent the fraction of atom of hydrogen atom in the structure. If, if for example, here that if the hydrogen atom is full exchange 
we will have an occupancy equal to zero. Uh, another valid strategy uh, for the neutral refinement uh, uh, within RefMAC 5 is to use the reference structure restraint. So we, we restrain the interatomic distances between non-hydrogen atoms to the reference X-ray structure. This is because in general, when we deal with neutron structure and neutron data, they have a low data completeness, so they can, can uh, um, uh, be uh, reflect on the not very good geometry. So we restrained the non-atomic, <coughs> sorry, uh, non-hydrogen atoms to, um, to do of an high resolution structure x ray structure. So, in this example, we use the neutron structure of uh, human hemoglobin, so neutron structure at 2.10 angstrom, and we restrain these distances to the x ray structure at 1.25 angstrom. And now it is work. This is our low resolution neutron structure. This is our high resolution x ray structure, and we restrain. After we restrain, we will, we will improve the model, so we will have a better geometry, and then we will perform a mixture HD parameters of uh, hydrogens. And we can clearly see in this example that uh, there is uh, the protonation states, uh, the protonation of this histidine is clear from the uh, omit map generated with RefMAC5. In addition, we also test the program on a data set provided by my supervisor, Roberto Steiner. So urate oxidase is an enzyme which is uh, essential for the catabolism of uric acid is not present in human, but its recombinant form is, um, is used as a therapeutic uh, compound for the treatment of the hyperuricemia. So previous X-ray crystallographic studies um, plus uh, uh, Raman spectroscopy studies and uh, also quantum mechanical calculation uh, have demonstrated that uh, this, this, uh, the, the reaction of this enzyme proceed via a, a formation of a C5 peroxo intermediate. So in order to see if this peroxide is protonated or deprotonated and to know uh, about the neighborhood of this peroxide in terms of chemistry, also neutron data at 1.9 angstrom of resolution were collected and we performed a neutron refinement by using RefMAC5. And from this refinement, we um, obtain the fact that we, uh, we know that the peroxide is deprotonated and uh, the protonation of the uh, threonine is uh, very clear in the density map. And this is a pass to have a better insight in the mechanism of this enzyme. So now, I will start talking about uh, how placing hydrogen atom based on the fit to the density. This is a very new implementation. So most of the hydrogen atoms we know can be predicted by using parent atoms and torsion angle. So let's assume that we have four atoms, so X1, X2, X3, and X4. We know the position of the three atom, and we want to generate atom number four that is on the same plane as the previous three atom and forms an angle omega. So to do that, we need to create a rotation matrix and rotate a vector V around an axis U by an angle omega. Based on the potential torsion angle, we can have, uh, um, sorry, different potential position for hydrogen. So. For example, for the tyrosine side chain, we can have two potential positions. And for the threonine cysteine and serine side chain, we can have three potential positions. After we determine this position, we can we fit this uh, uh, predicted position to the density to find the maximum peak, so to find the best position of hydrogen position that fit better the density. We use the overlap function to do that. And in this example, we, we, so we um, tested the program on cryo-EM structure, so in the apoferritin at 1.22 angstrom, and also for the GABA receptor at 1.7 angstrom, and we can see that our prediction fit uh, for the tyrosine and threonine side chain fit perfectly uh, the density. And also, we test the program also on NMX, uh, neutron macromolecular crystallographic data, 
also we started with the high resolution and then we test also for a, a low resolution structure. So to summarize, uh, uh, the new CCP4 monomer library have been made available in the latest CCP4 release. So this is, can be used, uh, are already available, so user can be used these libraries for electron diffraction, cryo-M refinement of hydrogen, uh, also for analyzing non-banding interaction. New RefMAC version will be available in the next CCP4 release. We are doing some testing, so probably will be available soon. And this is a, a version at the new implementation for the neutral refinement. And what's next? We want firstly uh, redefine all the neutron PDP, PDP entries and also uh, evaluate the, the packages. And uh, another important thing is we need to analyze no bonding interaction because the fit to the density is not enough. We need to know also the chemistry around the hydrogen atoms. And also we need to analyze water molecule with different map. So thank you very much. I would like to thank my supervisor, Roberto and Gary, and also many people, my colleagues at the LMB. And uh, thank you all for the attention. Super, thank you very much for that talk. That was really nice. Um, we've got, I think, five minutes or so for questions. So if, uh, let's see if any have come in on Slack. Um, I'll also check the Q&A. Uh, someone has asked, uh, where is RefMac in neutron refinement implemented? Uh, it's not, uh, can you hear me? Uh, yep. It's not yet available because we will release uh, in the next, uh, in the next is before release, the implementation of uh, the neutral refinement. So now I'll show this implementation, but, but will be available in the next release because we are testing now. So after we have done all the tests, it will be available to everyone. Super. Um, I can see a few people typing in Slack, but no questions have come in there. Um, so maybe I can interject my own question in the meantime. I was wondering with the uh, uh, CCP4, um, I've forgotten what the name of it was, the one where you put the extra information about the hydrogens and is there anything else you'd want to add to that um, in the future? Uh, do you mean for restraints? Uh, yes. No, for now we use these restraints, but we, uh, one thing that we need to analyze are non bonding interaction. So we will use the restraint then to analyze the non bonding interaction. But for now, the, this information I think that we uh, add from uh, experimental data and also theoretical calculation is enough in terms of position in geometry. Um, Okay, we've got a question from Peter Moody. Uh, do you have a feel for the resolution needed for HD occupancy refinement? Uh, sorry, do you have a? a? A feel for the resolution needed for HD occupancy refinement. Yes, yes. So uh, the, for my, uh, the last implementation, you mean? Uh, yes, I think yeah, so. so. Yes, because for now we need to to see better the data because we when we have high resolution it's 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 more easy to fit to predict the um, the hydrogen position but when we have lowest resolution we don't have always the peaks so we need also to analyze the the environment to know if will be there the hydrogen or not so yes okay harry powell has asked a question for robbie if he's about when will PDB redo cover neutron structures? So perhaps you can answer that in Slack. Um, then Pedro Matias has asked, will the new FMAC be released only with CCP48? I think so, but I don't know if Gary can reply to this question, but I think for now, yes, will be released just for CCP4. Then I don't know in the future. Um, starting from what uh, lowest resolution Will you include hydrogen atoms for X-ray structure refinement? Ah, uh, yeah, hey, we want to. Uh, so we want to also analyze X-ray structure because for now we are doing just a um, refine neutron uh, against neutron data alone. So we don't uh, um, refine. 
And I think uh, a final question here is, are there any plans to make ACE drug capable of dealing with FE atoms and ligands or to make better proper CIF files for those monomers, e.g. HGC, HEM or SRM? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, ACE drug is always in, in progress in the implementation, so yes. So I think this is a good time to maybe uh, call time on this now. We've got to uh, 2.50. So I'd like to um, thank all the speakers again for the wonderful talks. And I guess um, I guess it's now back after after coffee breaks, no?